little bit. Next year, I'm putting together a whole white banquet for these three guys. Yes. Everybody wants to white. And I'm hoping all of Brandon's family come. It's going to be in PA. But <laughs> I got him. <laughs> Look, I done been up here so much, I should be the pastor. <laughs> Mom's <laughs> got you. <laughs> I'm scared to turn my back on you. <laughs> I think I'm we'll going to put y'all in front of me <laughs> so I can see. <laughs> oh, they know I'm getting old. <laughs> but it's all good. Because we're here for a reason. <laughs> and the reason is assistant pastor Brandon yes. Williams and I'm here because I love him and I drove one way from Jersey and I don't know where my daughter drive like lightning <laughs> trying to keep up with Pastor Scott yes. I told her last time I was going to have a rest of <laughs> but it's so good because I would not miss his orientation I told God just keep me I told Courtney on Thursday I can't even raise my own when you're trying to do stuff for Christmas. <laughs> Her all over. <laughs> but Lord, please, Jesus, get me to the house of Job on Sunday. Yes. I woke up this morning, my daughter was like, what can you guys say? Well, I got my home halfway up. <laughs> I said, the rest going to the church. <laughs> I said, because I'm going to be with Pastor Brandon and them. I said, we might as well get on the road because we got to go. If the bridge show up, we might have to swim. <laughs> but we're going to be with them in the house of the Lord. Because these are God's children. And I am so happy to be here. We try to make it here every Sunday. And the bridge is $4 a look. So I got to get a job. <laughs> but it's all good. Because God said, where there's a will, there's a way. He put food on our table. Like the guy said, the little brother, light. Whatever you give us, we're going to accept it. Because he don't give you no more you can take. We might wallow all night and hoop and holler. Pain, oh, unhappiness. But in the morning, there's joy. You can weep all night, but there's joy in the morning. And God ain't let you suffer for so long. He's either going to keep you or he's going to take you with him. You ain't going to suffer for so long. And he ain't going to give you two more anymore, no more you can handle. Mm -hmm. And I know that. Yes. I know. Yes. I've lost two husbands and I'm still standing here. Yes. And there was time I want to fall down and cross over and jump over a bridge. Because mm -hmm. my first husband passed away left me with eight children to raise. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, Jesus, mm -hmm. you did not do this. Sir. And you can always find yourself hating God sometimes. Like, why did you do this? There's people out here killing people every day and they're still here. He did nothing but take care of his family. And you can doubt God. Then I had to come back to reality and say, this is my work, not your work. You want to go north, but you're going south with me. You got your own plans, but I got my plans. And my plans is, he's coming home with me. After 18 years, I married again. I married Pastor Fred. Going home to be with the Lord. And I did not question him this time. I knew better. I looked at Pastor Scott. I said, I can't take no more. But whatever God says, whatever God do, Pastor Scott, I'm going to be here. I'm going to hurt my heart and all that, but I'm going to be all right. So whatever God do, that's his work. God today is opening up the house of Job for the work of the Lord. And the work of the Lord be looking at it with Brandon. Is your mother's baby mama here today? Where is Brandon's baby? You the mother. Honey, let me tell you something. You're a fine man. This is a fine man. I wish men had his strength like he had. I wish men could be as gentle as, oh, he's supposed to get dirty sometimes, but they do. But that's a fine man. And I said a long time ago, I don't know if you said, I said if I was just a little bit younger, me and you have problems. 
So that's a fine man. My daughter tell me to wrap it up, leave him alone. <laughs> No, but here, no. you called me up here. Look, don't call the mother of the church up if you don't want to hear something. <laughs> right, Mo? <Scott? laughs> Look, that's Scott, wrap it up. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I love it. Because it's all about how I said, Look, next time you'll leave me sitting down my own set. <laughs> but I just want to say, he is such a wonderful person. And may God bless him. And all joking aside, keep you in good health. <laughs> Look, may God bless you. And may God bring good to your heart. Because it's already there. And may God take care of you. All three of you. <laughs> Sweet and kind of him, because I got you. <laughs> and I ain't turning my back on you. <laughs> may God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, hallelujah. Amen. We're going to move ahead now. Amen. Hallelujah. Give me a big favor. Just stretch out to the Lord. Come on. Stand up a little bit. Come on now. I know we've been sitting here. And, and, and just stretch and tell the Lord, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I want you, Lord. I want you, Lord. And you are here for me right now. Amen. Give me a hand clap. Hallelujah. Check it out. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop looking at me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Have a seat. God is good and worthy to be praised. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm kind of hot now. We're going to move ahead. Um, we, we have a very holy thing to do today, and we're going to get it done. Amen? Amen. And you're all participants. Um, and we're going to move, move, move quickly. I just have a few words, and, and we're going to move along very quickly. I don't like to tarry or dally, none of that. And as, as, as Mother Sill says, I drive. And that's the way I preach. That's why I live my life on purpose. Sometimes make me tired though, but that's the way I am. Amen? Amen. 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 And this is Christmas time, and this is a great time to, to have a new assistant pastor because yes. since he first walked into the door, he's been a mighty gift. Mm -hmm. I think there were times when my strength wavered. I'm only human, and that's why you got to have two right hands yes. behind you because, oh, yes. because where I don't have it, these brothers have it. Oh, yeah. So we yeah. all need people. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. think you can do it by yourself, you. you're wrong. Yes. If, if you think you can do it by yourself, you're deluded. If you think you can do it by yourself, you're a liar. You're right. And the truth ain't in you. That's true. I'm 55 years old and I still need my mother. Oh, amen. 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 I'm 55 and I still need my sons. Yes. You know, without them, I don't feel alive sometimes amen. because they let me know that I got it going on. Right? Yes. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Um, this is Christmas time, and I'm going to speak so quickly about, about Christmas because Brandon's been my gift, and Reverend Jesse's been, has, has been my gift also. Yes, yes. And so has my mother, and Mother Herbert, and, and Mother Sills. Mm -hmm. Without these four, I don't know where I'd be today. But I'm going to speak a little bit about, about Christmas. We know it's about Santa Claus, and we're all wearing red, a lot of red hair. Mm -hmm. But I looked at, I looked at um, Santa, and, and his name, as we know, is St. Nicholas, right? Yes. But I read about this guy, and he was a bad guy. He, he, they threw him in jail. St. <laughs> Nicholas liked to fight. There was the first council of Nicene, and here comes Santa Claus, St. Nick, right? Yeah. And it's the first time they were trying to, trying to lay down the rules for the Christian church. And this guy named Arius was in there talking, running off his mouth, talking about Jesus is not divine. Mm -hmm. And that's where it was a big struggle with the church, and it's still a big struggle with other of our, of our Christian brothers. God bless them. And while this man was talking, Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, got up and punched the man in the face. <laughs> Decked him. And, and this was in front of King Con Emperor Constantine, who won under the banner of, of the Lord. You see, we think Santa's going to come out of a chimney, but Santa was a man who didn't want to hear nothing about Jesus that was wrong. And that he, he was the Bishop of Myra in Turkey. And at that time, Turkey was part of the center of the world. Now it's a, it's a backwater that goes to show you that you might think you're in a backwater now, but everything must change. That if we might be the, the, the tail in many ways, but everything must change. Even St. Nicholas Santa Claus was a powerful gangster for the Lord, and they're trying to make him into a clown today. Don't worry. Everything must change, and it's because that's the way the enemy works. He, he wants you sometimes to, see him, to seem diluted. 
He wants us to think that St. Nicholas is, 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 is a guy in a red suit. No, he was, he was an old man, but he had enough strength to knock this heathen out cold in front of everybody. That's right. That's what the power of the Lord will do for you. When people think that you are counted out, when people think that you ain't got nothing left, call upon the Lord and see what happened. You will knock them out cold. He went to jail. And while he was in jail, he saw a vision of the Lord. They, they, they defrocked him. He was no longer bishop. He lost it all. But he saw the Lord show up. And, and he had an apparition. And, 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 and what, he, what they told him is that you shall always be a bishop. You see, it's not man who ordains. That's right, that's right. Amen. It is the Lord. Amen. It is not God who can set you on high. I mean, it is not man who can set you on high. Yeah. It is the Lord. Yeah. And an example of, of St. Nicholas is an example of how we treat Christ, Christ, Christmas today. Christmas, of course, means Christ's Mass. That's right. The Mass of Christ. That's right. Amen. We know that Christ means the Anointed One. Amen. The Anointed One of God. That's right. Amen. The Bible further tells me that in the beginning was what? The Word. Yes. And the Word was with God. Amen. And the Word was God. God. Yes. And that's what Santa Claus knew. That's what St. Nicholas do. And that's why he uppercut that brother to the floor. <laughs> Amen? He don't want to hear no crap about Jesus is not divine. Amen. That's the trouble with Christmas now. We think that Jesus is not divine. You see, but St. Nick had a gift. His gift might have been Mike Tyson's gift. Whatever his gift was, he used it for the Lord. Whatever your gift is, use it for the Lord. Don't never think people are going to think you're too street. You're too ghetto. You're too this. You're too that. You're too short. You're too big. You're too skinny. You're too ugly. You're too black. You're too white. Yeah. They can't even describe you, but you use what they don't like about you to use to further the aims of the Lord. And that's what Christmas is about. Christmas is realizing your gift. It's the thing you can't buy. It's the thing they can't take away. They couldn't take away Santa Claus's bishop for it. Couldn't do it because it was given to him by the Lord. And every morning we wake up, it's Christ Mass. It is, it is, it is a time of acknowledging the anointed one in our lives. Nothing else. That second word of Christmas means Mass. It means, it, it means it, in the in original term, it meant dismissal. Not like we say to people, I dismiss you. You diss me, you know? Get away from me, be ye gone. Not that kind of thing. Dismissal in the original sense meant mission. So Christmas is Christ's mission. The mission of the anointed one. The mission of the anointed one is clear. It, it, the brother mentioned John 3, 16. That's his mission. That whomsoever what? Believeth. In him shall not perish, but would have what? Yes. Everlasting life. Yes. That's when you're going to find the strength to put these people to shame who show up in front of your face talking crap. Yes. It, Santa Claus did not come down no chimney. He came with the right hook. And sometimes we rather come with the right hook for our problems. Yes. Don't be afraid. Yes. Yes. Don't make this thing into a joke. Yes. Christmas is about power. Yes. Christmas is about creation. Christmas is about acknowledging the originator of life. Yeah. Every morning is a new day. Every morning is a new Christmas. Every morning is a gift. Every night is just a, a time for the Lord to say pretty soon to you, let there be what? Light. And there was light and God said it is what? Good. That's Christmas. You don't need to buy a single thing. You don't need to go on the debt, throwing up your credit cards. Don't worry if you don't have it. I'm going to tell you what you got. You got your old crazy self. You got your old disagreeable self. You got your doubtful self. You got your depressed self. You got whatever self you got today. Broke leg, skinny leg, no leg. Whatever it is you got, it's a gift from the Lord. Use it. Yeah. Yeah. And when the enemy shows up telling you that Jesus is not divine, 
And then she'll tell you that you gotta buy things to, to have a good holiday. The devil is a liar. You don't need none of that stuff. Because if you look in the mirror, you want you to understand there has never been something like you before, and there never will be another one like you again. It, it, it is an honor to know you. It is an honor to see you. It is an honor to touch you and hold your hand and speak before you. God has given us these gifts. And each one of them is you. And let me tell you, Saint Nick was just, he was probably a regular Negro. He was one of us walking around here. He just was he was packing his, his, his right arm. And sometimes we think that we need all these things. We don't. If God be for us, what? Who can be against us? Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm reminded of, and I'm done, a part of the Bible where there was a beggar. And he was at the gate called Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. What the Bible says though, the gate was not really called Beautiful, but we know that translations occur. But what it was, the right time gate. Uh -huh. He was a beggar at the right time. And the Bible says that Peter and John was headed to the temple to pray at the ninth hour. And the man was there trying to get alms. And alms, A-L-M, was a word that meant to have compassionatedness. I'm not speaking in bias, it's a word compassionatedness. It, it means to have a, a, a state of mind where you're compassionate. Like being opinionated, you can be compassionated. And the, 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 to put people in a state of compassionatedness, he was there begging for things. Like we do with our own attitudes on Christ's mass. You don't have to worry about these things. And when Peter and John saw this man, what he said to them? Look at us. Look at us like I'm looking at you, you wonderful kids. He said, look at us like I'm looking at you right now. He said, look at us and see what we have. And, and they didn't have nothing. They didn't have a window to throw it out. They didn't have nothing at all to give him. But he said, look at us. And, and, and the man looked at him still expecting something. But what did they say to him? We know. He said, silver and gold. Hallelujah. I have none. But such as I have, I give all to you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. That's what you got. Don't you worry about 25th of December. Don't you worry about the 1st of January. Silver and gold, we may have heaven. And you know what? You don't need it. You know what? You shouldn't even want it that much. Because once you got Jesus Christ of Nazareth, look what he did to people. People thronged him. They were sick. They thought they were sick, all they need was the Lord. You think you ain't good enough, all you need is the Lord. And they said to that man, get up and walk. And he got up and walked, and as he walked, he entered into the temple praising God. He was there at the gate called Beautiful, which really at the right time. And the right time is to see what's around you. Look at yourself sometime in the right way. You were here on purpose. I told my people before that Jesus himself was described. They saw Jesus. Josephus saw him and described it as what is this way. Jesus was black. It's written down. Look at it yourself. A man called Robert Eisler. Look at it. And he, he said, furthermore, he had a hunchback. And he was very small of stature. So Jesus didn't come looking good. But what he had, he had the power of God to bring down the stronghold of the enemy. So you ain't hunchback. Your nose looks fine to me right now. And you are black and beautiful. Why do you worry? And I'm grateful today for this gift called Assistant Pastor Brandon. I had a video of Brandon. He was different. He was standing on the wall. I said, stand over here. I want to talk to you. And Brandon stood by the wall. And he spoke about his life. He says, I live around the corner. <laughs> and he, I got videos of all of you. So mad, okay? And, and, and he was humble. But I saw the strength in him. And I was here preaching like I'm preaching now. It was empty in here. And one person showed up. Brandon showed up. Amen. And I finished the sermon. He was walking by. You see, it was the right time. Yes. Yes. It was a Christ mass time. Yes. Yes. And when you sometimes you gotta follow what is within you. Your instincts can speak eloquently about where you should go, but we shut that switch off and, and we, we focus on other things that we don't even need. But when your spirit says stop, sometimes you gotta stop. When your spirit says go, 
sometimes you got to go. Right. When the spirit is saying, it's afraid, sometimes you got to do something else. And because he listened to his spirit at that moment, he was at the gate called Beautiful at the same time. And he came here and he looked around. And what did he find? His destiny in the Lord. And that's all we need to be looking for. That's all we need to be concerned about. We don't have to worry about nothing else. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what you said. I don't care what they said when they raised you. I don't care if they push you down the stairs and jump on top of you like it was WWF wrestling. I don't care what happened. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care. Thank you. It don't matter. Why don't it matter? The Bible is clear. There's a God called Lazarus. What was he? Dead. And furthermore, he was stinking. You got a chance. You can do it. Don't you let them fret you about these material things. Don't you worry about it. The Bible is clear. What shall the prophet a man what? If he should what? Lose his soul. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now speaking about material blessings, and here comes Randy. God bless her anyhow. She was here praising the Lord anyhow. My word is done. Have joy for Christmas. Yes. Every joy is, is, is every day is a Christmas. Yes. Every day yes. is a Christ man. Yes. Every day the sun shines upon you. Yes. Every day your heart is beating boom, 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 right now. Yes. Not of your own will. You didn't cause that heart to beat, nor can you stop it. It, it is the heart that God gave you. Yes. Honor it, protect it, yes. cherish it. And if something go wrong, do like that beggar man says, help me. What about the blind beggar? What did he say? Jesus and Lazarus, help me. And what happened? He got his sight. You want our sight too, right? Amen. We're calling Dick and Brandon to come forward. I'm going to call, um, please stand here. I'm going to call um, Pastor Bridges. She, she, she is a senior pastor. On your knees. Stretch out your hands towards, towards Brandon. Come in, sister. Anoint him and pray. God anoint him with your spirit. It's already there. He But fear not, yet ye ka ko ro 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 ro
into your ministry, God. And as you bring them higher, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that 